but just take your time, read the directions. And look at that, right across the ground. Hello pilots, welcome back to Motion RC. I'm James and today we have a gorgeous day for a maiden on my first Nexa model. This is the Nexa DH82 Tiger Moth. Um, and I'm so excited. It's my first biplane. I have two flights on her now today and we're gonna be filming this third flight. And uh, she's absolutely gorgeous. Anybody who ever wanted an old timey aircraft, uh, don't look over these Tiger Moths. It's absolutely gorgeous and I enjoy its slow pace and just overall an enjoyable model. So we're gonna start with the flight, then we'll land and we'll talk a bit about her. Alex, are you ready? Checking my throws. I've been flying it on high rates. Um, as far as the book goes, they don't really give you um, rates as far as uh, what you can go. So I just have my servo set for about 90% on my ailerons and 80% on my elevators. And it's been pretty darn good. She's not too aerobatic as you'd expect from a, you know, an old timey warbird, but I'm running her on 4S. I have an Admiral 5. Uh, GP5 motor in the front and a 5000 4S pack and I had to play with the CG a bit but I've talked about that in our live shows which you could always check out at 12 p.m. Eastern on Friday. So Alex are you ready for takeoff? Send it. Ready to go. Taking off right to left. And we're gonna bring up the throttle slowly but surely. Work on the rudder. Get her out of there. Beautiful. Now that's that is full throttle. And now I've been bringing her down to about half. And you can see, taking my hands off the sticks, I got her trimmed out, that's half throttle, looking good. We got some minor crosswinds up there. But overall, a beautiful day. And just an absolutely gorgeous model. Let's do a fast pass. Here comes full throttle. So again, this is with the recommended setup that we have on the website. So that's the Admiral Motors high-tech servos. You only need four of them. One for the elevator, one for the rudder, and two smaller aileron servos. And then I got an, I put an 85 amp ESC, a call for a 65, but I just went with what I had on me. So that actually helped my nose weight a bit. But now I'm at half throttle, even less than half. Let's just soar across. It's got a beautiful presence to it, and I absolutely love her. Give it a little rudder in the turn. There we go. And you could definitely fly her slower and in tighter spaces. Look at that. Nice rudder turn. I'm so excited about this plane. I never had a biplane. I always wanted one. There wasn't really too many in foam electric uh, that I was interested in. Um, so I was excited that we got one in a balsa and I've been enjoying these balsa builds so much now, guys. Anyone who hasn't done one before, don't be scared. Just take your time. An ARF kit is nothing to fear. It's not like you're actually having to do covering or anything. The hardest part is probably the hinges, but just take your time, read the directions. Look at that. Right across the ground. And let's get up and out. So now my first flight, I just did four minutes, just wanted to go up. I trimmed it out, worked on some of those approaches and realized that, oh, she's pretty tame in the air. Nothing, uh, nothing out of the ordinary that I could see. And then the second flight, when I landed, I had 69% in my battery after four, four minutes. So I pushed the timer to seven minutes. Again, useful throttle. So whenever I'm over 25% on my sticks, my timer counts down. And uh, I landed the second flight after seven minutes right on the dot. And I still had 32%. I was at 3.805 on my cells. So that's about perfect for me. And again, that's on this setup. I know guys, if you read the forums, people have set this up on 6S. They've set it up on all different systems, gassers. It comes with all the gas uh, components that you would need if you wanted to set it up in a gas orientation. But that's up to you. I don't mess with gas. I like the cleanliness of this. Now I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna swing around, come back the other way, Alec. Bring it up high. 
Power off. That's power off. Now as far as like vertical, she's not really a vertical style bird. At least with this setup. So I'm gonna go in, let's try a loop. That was nice. But you can see I'm on 90% rates, here's my roll. Oh, <laughs> oh man. It's not what she likes to do. Or I just gotta get used to it, but again, we are very gusty above those trees. You can see you're getting blown around a bit. I don't have a gyro in there. I just have a standard six channel uh, admiral. So I have nothing to correct that. For my maiden, I didn't want to bother with a gyro and something like this. I really want to learn, uh, you know, the differences of flying a bite. But this one is that nice, relaxing morning flyer. I could see myself flying this in the mornings at Joe Nall. Things like that coming out here on a Saturday morning early. Getting in some flights before the crowd starts coming in. All right, I'm gonna turn around and go out for a touch and go. Looking down at my timer, I've got two minutes and 30 seconds. So I'm gonna bring it up around the trees, give a little rudder. And now we're starting to get some cross. Oh yeah. Ooh. We are not going to, uh, there it is. I'll take it on a crosswind. That was funny. The wind kind of told me, yeah, let's go down to the earth. <laughs> <laughs> Just manage it. Just manage it. Takes time to learn crosswinds. And it's something that's hard to talk about when you're on video, at least for me. It's something that you just innate, your sticks are now moving without you even thinking about it. Let's bring it in full throttle pass again. Oh, that looks awesome. I might have to pick up my aileron rate. I think it should be able to roll a little better than that. But that's not what it's really for, you know? This is more where it shines in these short turns, tight turns. So cool. I'm so excited about this plane. Guys, and I was really impressed overall, talk a little bit about the Nexa uh, as a brand. Really nice kit. You know, I've built a few Black Horse models now. And this was the first Nex I saw, but from what I'm seeing on Hobby Squawk with guys building different ones, like uh, the Merry Boozers, they put together the P47. They really enjoyed that kit. A lot of guys say the kits come in nice and clean. Everything's cut to perfection. The covering looks really good on them. It's all pre-covered. You get all the rods and you get basically everything you need but the electronics. Right across Alex's face. That's something I have to work on. The landing gear is a bit bouncy, I noticed. So I know somebody added some springs to it, like crossing springs, but overall I like it. So now I'm at 15 seconds, so I think I'm gonna take a landing on this one, Alex. And then we'll talk about her. And I got my battery checker in my pocket. <laughs> so now I'm power off. Now I'm gonna bring power back just a tad. right in front of me and little bouncies I'll take it but hey for a third flight I'm learning the model but I'm so excited to get out here more I'm it's such a pretty model too I think this is one the wife will let you hang up what do you think in the living room definitely it looks so good maybe the dining room maybe, maybe the, the dining, dining room, room. <laughs> we'll hang it in the bathroom it's a real conversation piece <laughs> Alex is coming in to grab the camera, and while we're still in the same shot, I'll, uh, you know, check the battery. So my timer is at four seconds on a seven minute, again, useful throttle time. And now guys, what I did, um, just some minor modifications. The Tiger Moth, when it comes, they give you like nylon bolts. They'd want you to um, just punch a hole here. There's nylon screw. Uh, to accept and you'd screw in your um, your hatch. I just added a magnet back here 
and on the inside here and it just makes it so easy to do it with the magnet you know but let's pull out our 5000 we unplugged it again nice 5000 4s 43 percent wow 3.8 3.826 so i was flying even tamer than i did on the last flight that i did but that's about perfect i mean we're about at a storage charge i could probably push for an easy another two minutes on that if i wanted to depends on you guys but i'd rather land and not have to storage charge my pack um, for when i'm done for the day but while we're here should we just talk about her now yeah, let's finish her up let's finish her up so actually i'll leave the canopy off and you'll get the b-roll of what's inside but again i got the two high techs in here in the back i got hs 48 485 hbs for the rudder and the elevator and the elevator works with this tri linkage here so both push rods connect to the one servo which is which is great on the on that and then the ailerons i believe i have just 85 bb uh 85 hbs inside so smaller smaller servos on there these are 45 gram and i believe those are 17 in the ailerons but overall what a beautiful kit on the inside too i did a little manipulation for the recommended specs you're not going to hit your cg um with the recommended battery which that is and the admiral gp5 motor without adding some weight i added three ounces of little lead uh adhesive to the uh, motor mount and that gave me the perfect cg i also cut a hole in the firewall and my 5000 slides all the way through into the cowl i made a plate in the front which i showed on one of our live shows and we could probably throw in that footage uh here so you can see but other than that guys as far as the construction again every piece comes out already cut you're doing hardly anything as far as you don't have to really manipulate much you just have to glue in your your hinges um, for the control surfaces make sure you again follow the directions the tail wheel the uh, the tail wheel rod will go into the rudder that's the only mistake i made i glued the rudder in without reading ahead into the directions and realized i didn't do that so i had to cut it out and i used um, the sticker they give you they give you covering stickers and i covered my mistake on the hinge so that's where i messed up but overall, you have access to, you know, things you might need. The wing bolts right here. If you ever needed to remove the wings, all the connections, uh, there's nothing on the top. But again, a model like this, once you have the fly wire on, you're not going to need, you're usually not going to take it apart. She's 1,400 millimeters wide, so she fits fine in a car um, as is. And she looks really stunning. Up front, I believe I have a 12 by 7. Let me check that. Or is it a 12 by 9? It is a, sorry, 12 by six, 12 by six electric propeller up front. And somebody actually said I should have just got a nose, a nose spinner, a weighted nose spinner would probably have helped my CG um, even more uh, on that end. But overall guys, I mean, for the size, she's a nice sturdy model. She looks good in the sky and beautifully built. You get the nice DH, the Haviland on the hubcaps. I enjoy that. And the, again, the stickers, all done and you get these really nice metal linkages and stuff and the hinges are great i just see them ca them all in and these little accessory bits that hide your uh your rods but overall i'm excited for my first biplane guys i hope you guys are excited that now motion we have a ton of options in balsa and i'm so excited to do even more of them so that'll do it for me here at the field guys with the nexa tiger moth and hopefully the next nexa plane i get i'm thinking that twin mustang maybe or the ju52 but uh, we'll have to wait for that but guys thank you for watching hit the like button leave a comment if you have any questions head over to hobby squawk i got the link in the description product link is in the description as well and we'll see you next time at motion rc it is hot <laughs> <laughs> oh lord i'm sweating oh lord i'm sweating